Welcome to Midnight Mule FPL. I'm Midnight Mule and in this video I'm going to show you my team as it stands at the moment for the new fantasy season. We actually have nearly four weeks left so there will be some changes but I think the general idea will stay the same because I've got a certain strategy I've been thinking about for a few months and I'd like to give it a go because I think it may be all right. The idea is I've always thought team value is actually very important despite what some people say. So the first few weeks I'm going to heavily go after team value, which means I'm going to have to make lots of transfers, take lots of hits, obviously use my wild card very early, maybe even game week two. But by about game week six or seven, I'll be a fair bit richer than the other managers and then my team should be slightly better. So I'll have over 30 weeks to claw back the difference and hopefully overtake all of them. So that'd be nice. So if you think my team looks a bit weird, it's because I don't care too much about game week two. This is just about game week one and trying to find players that I think may do well in game week one, which means they'd be going up in value. Before I show you the team, I just want to say thank you very much to everyone who entered the Midnight Mule Euro League and well done to Flores for coming top with 449 with Lakaka FC. And then Amuro at 09 FC and Nathan were both top scorers in the last week with 47 points. This is my squad of 15 I'm going to be showing you and what I'm looking for is players that I think by and large have a chance of getting a return on their first game week one because if they do they may go up in value. If they don't I'll almost certainly have to sell them to get in someone who did get a return and will go up in value. So that means I really want to bias towards players that are largely at home and certainly playing before the end of Saturday because Saturday night a million or so managers are going to be making transfers. There'll be some Ipswich midfielder that no one's got that got a goal and assist. They're going up in value, so I have to get them. So a downside of this strategy is because I'm going to be buying players for the first few weeks that have just done well, they're by and large not going to be doing well in the coming weeks. So my squad is actually going to be quite rubbish, so I'm losing points. And I'm going to be taking hits, so I'm going to be losing points there. So um, a little bit of a gamble, but I think it'd be fun. And I think I've got a reasonable chance of doing all right. So the first game is Friday evening. Man United are at home to Fulham. My first draft, I did have three United players and one Fulham, just because I thought it'd be fun. But as things stand, I've only got one United player, and that's Onana, and no Fulham players. On Saturday, the first game is Ipswich at home to Liverpool. I have no players from either of those. Ipswich reasonable chance they won't get anything Liverpool they're when they play early and they're away they do tend to sometimes underperform so I don't feel too bad that I don't have any Liverpool players obviously if Gakpo plays in scores he'll go up in value so I'd probably have to buy Gakpo but as it stands apart from Onana my first player is playing at three o'clock on Saturday and that's Isaac and he's almost certainly going to be my captain at home to Southampton Newcastle are very good at home. I think he's got a good chance of getting a return. I also have from Newcastle, Gordon and Pope. Now I did originally have Trippier, but he was slightly too expensive for what else I could fit in. And there does seem to be some doubts regarding whether he's actually going to be starting in game week one because he's had a busy summer. So I've gone with Pope. Now I realise that no other sensible manager is going to have two five million keepers, but... Because all my players are disposable, they're all going to be moving on. It's like I've got money there. And if there's a two, four and a half million keepers that keep a clean sheet and they're going up in value, I'm going to have to swap those for these two anyway. So all my players are disposable. And then also playing three o'clock on the Saturday are Arsenal at home to Wolves. So which Arsenal defender do you go for? Well, I've got Gabriel. But for Gabriel, Saliba and White, I've heard arguments for and against each of them. And of course, whichever one I buy, it's going to be one of the other ones that's going to get an assist or a goal. So to cover myself, I've got all three Arsenal defenders. There's a reasonable chance at least two of these would be getting sold after game week one, possibly all three. But they might keep a clean sheet, so that'd be some nice points for me. Also three o'clock, New Nottingham Forest are at home to Bournemouth. And I think Gibbs, White and hudson Adoy both have a chance. If New Nottingham Forest score, they could be involved. They might go up in value. And then the later game is West Ham are at home to Aston Villa. Now, Bowen is one of the few players in my squad that I'm showing you that 
if I wasn't doing this strategy, I'd probably still have him. I think Bowen is an excellent pick. I think he's very cheap and I think he could do quite well. But I've got him there because he's at home and who knows if he scores, he'll be going up in value. I've also got, because he's nice and cheap, but he's a very good player. And that's Rogers from Aston Villa. So he's one of my very few away players. On Sunday, the first game is Brentford against Palace. I have no players from that. And then we have Chelsea against Man City. Now, I don't particularly need to have any of those players for game week one. However, in game week two, when Man City are at home to Ipswich, I think I have to have Haaland. And I think he's going to go up in value. I think when we get to game week one, maybe 50% of teams are going to have Haaland. Currently, it's just above 30%. And I think after game week one, there'd be too many managers that said they're not going with him for game week two are going to be too scared and they're going to fit him into their team. So I'm... Even if Haaland doesn't score game week one, I think there's a reasonable chance he will go up in value. So I've got Haaland. And then also for Man City, I've got Gvardiol. Um, if I need to dump him after game week two, I will. But we'll see how that goes. And on the Monday, we have Leicester are at home to Spurs. So face is nice and cheap. If magically uh, Leicester managed to keep a clean sheet at only 4 million, if he plays, he'd be going up in value. And then finally... I have Vardy because I like Leicester. I like Vardy. Pompey's my main team, but Leicester's my second team because I used to see them play at Filbert Street. So of these, my bench is currently likely to be, in no particular order, Rogers, Face and Hudson-Odoi. And then the rest will be who I'll be playing. Now, because we've got three and a half weeks left, yes, there will be some changes, but I am intending to put out quite a disposable team. If I make probably six or fewer transfers going to game week two, I would just take the hits. If I'm doing seven or more, I will probably play my wild card. And that's it. Uh, solid strategy. I think the extra two million or so I'm going to have by maybe game week six or seven is really going to help me. It's going to make a difference. And although I'm going to be down in eight millionth or so in the world, I think by Christmas I'll be up to one and a half million or so. And then after that, hopefully I'll still <laughs> keep doing all right. Hopefully that made sense. Hopefully you found it a little bit interesting. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.